This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going underwater. Hold your breath, because we're gonna be checking out all the different marine life that's down underneath there. But watch out, because we are actually killer snails. Uh, this is a educational deck building game for two to four players. It was done in collaboration with the American Museum of Natural History. Uh, and so let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. In Killer Snails, what you're trying to do over the course of the game is have some of these different peptides that you'll get from your snails, and you're trying to have the right three for each of these three sort of secret cabals uh, that you're trying to solve by the end of the game. At the beginning of the game, everybody starts with the 10 identical starter cards. Everyone will start with a basic prey, and then two other random preys that their snails in their hand will be able to defeat to gain peptides. Those peptides are the ones I just showed you that you're trying to get to complete the game. On your turn, you're going to draw five cards from the top of your deck, and then you can do one of many actions. What's going to happen is you're going to take an action, and then everybody else is going to take an action in a clockwise manner until it comes around to you. Everyone's only taking one action at a time until everyone is done with all the cards and have completed all their actions for a round. Let's go over the different actions that you can do. One thing you can do is play a snail card. So I'm going to play that card out there, and that would literally be my turn. It'd be the next player's turn. When it comes back to me, I'd have another turn. Now again, you start with five cards in your hand at the beginning of every round, and you're going to continue until all your cards are gone. Now snails actually have three different states they can be in. When you first play a snail, there's nothing on the card. They're known as being unfed. Later on, which I'll show you in just a moment, if they feed on one of these prey, they will get a token that says fed. At the end of each round, uh, the, state, the state of the snail will change. If it was fed at the end of the round, it will be unfed, which it then can feed again next round. If it was not fed that round, meaning it's unfed and it went through the whole round, it will then go into hibernation. If it's in hibernation and the whole round it does not eat or get unfed again, it will actually get discarded out of the game, so you're, it's sort of a sliding scale of the different states. Now one of the actions you could take is, if a snail is hibernating, you can just discard any one card into your discard pile and take the hibernation off and then it's unfed. This means it can now feed. It also means if, it's, uh, if it has not fed by the end of the round, it's still going to be alive, but it'll end up getting a hibernation token again, just a way of keeping it alive and trying to get it to be able to feed. Another action you could take is having the snail attack. Now what you do is you look at the snail's icons here. Some of them have, uh, one might say all, here this one matches up with this prey. So this means that this snail can actually kill this prey here. Now, the starting strength here uh, is the snail's starting strength, and that's two. This has a sort of a defense of four. I need to get to at least four. So in addition to saying I'm attacking, you always have to discard one card to, to activate the attack. Now, the attack actually has a value of different cards. Each card has a value, and some of them range from zero to many. So here we have two and three, and I could discard this card too. And right now I have two, three, four, that matches this. This snail has now eaten. These cards would go into my discard pile face up. And this prey right here has now been eating. So a couple of things happen. Number one is this snail is fed. Now the first thing that happens is uh, you activate the special ability on the prey that you just ate. It says, if a snail feeds on this prey, you may steal a prey from an opponent's pool. So you would basically steal one of these cards from another player, uh, and then this would get discarded. If you weren't stealing one, you would draw one from the deck. Now, uh, then you would gain some peptides. So there's a, a couple different ways you can do this. Some snails actually tell you, you can take one of these two, either Mu or Delta. Uh, and then, so we might actually, you, if this was it, you could take the one you want and you leave it right on the snail. Some of them actually have a question mark, which means you take a random one. There's a pile of these that you would take it and randomly flip it up and, okay, good, I have a Mew. And that's what would happen with this. Now, the basic prey is always there. It never gets removed. It's a zero attack. You still have to use one card discarded to kill it. Uh, and essentially, it's anything. So it's really easy to do, but it helps you get in, your snail into a different state. Another thing you could do for an action is buy one of the five face-up cards that starts there at the beginning of the round. The top left tells you the cost, one, three, and two for these, and that's how many cards from your hand you have to discard into your discard pile in order to buy this. So if I discarded one in my discard pile, I could buy this. Anytime you buy a card, it also goes into your discard pile 
uh, that will come cycled into your hand later. None of these get refreshed until the end of the round, meaning everybody has played all their cards. Another action you could take on your turn is to play one of these instant cards. Some you start with, some you'll buy, and you do the effect. In this case, it says, peek at any one peptide in a cabal. So peeking means you could take one of these, you could secretly look at it without anybody else seeing it, and then you put it back so that nobody knows. If you get a reveal, you actually have to flip it up and leave it up there so you have some information that other people don't. And these other cards do other different things, like, hey, starvation, use this card when feeding a snail to allow a snail to hunt any type, regardless of the type of prey that it is. Or maybe you throw down this card, which says, move any one snail to a lower feeding state. Usually use this to make somebody else's snail go into hibernation, for example. Uh, publishing, choose a type of peptide, then reveal one peptide from a cabal. If the peptide matches, you add it to your snail. So I'd pick any one of these. And I would say, uh, this is alpha. And I would flip it over and reveal it. This would say, ooh, it is alpha. I would actually get to take an alpha from the pile and put it on my snail. If this was not it, it would actually stay revealed uh, like that. And earlier, as we talked about Sony's instance, you know, swap a prey with any prey on the table or from the top of the prey deck. And also we talked a little bit about one of the predators. Some of the cards will say predator on them. And again, those are just activated and discarded. Essentially, it's affecting other players' prey or snails, if you will. Another thing you can do is try to solve a cabal. Let's say you have this snail. You can actually combine as many snails as you want to get the uh, to get the peptides that you need to solve a cabal. So here I'd say I'm going to try to extract this cabal. I say it's going to be these three, and we would flip this over. And if it's correct, yay! I would take these three peptides. I would put them in front of me in a pile, saying, "Hey, I finished this one." And I'm trying to do the same for the other two to win the game. If all three of these aren't right then I would discard all these, but these stay revealed for everybody else. The snail then just comes back to me. Now that snail used to extract would then go into my discard pile, and we would continue. Discard pile is the last thing you can do on your turn. If you have cards you don't want to use, you can simply discard them. That would be the end of the round once everybody's out of cards. And at the end of the round, all these cards would get refreshed. Everyone would change the state of their snails to one less. So if it was fed, it would be unfed. If it was unfed, it would go hibernation. And if it was hibernation, it would be discarded out of the game. And you would just continue another round. And this continues until one player has extracted all three cabals and that player is the winner. All right, there is killer snails. Uh, I first gotta say, most of the time when people try to come up to a game from an educational standpoint with being educational, the main reason for making the game my experience has been most of the time they're not great games uh, and this one tries to defy that and I think does a pretty good job of that. Uh, it is a pretty standard deck building game uh, where it's again you're, you're drawing your five cards, you're playing your cards, you're doing a bunch of different actions, you're buying cards, you're playing cards, you're discarding cards, you're getting through your deck, you're cycling through to try to get to an end victory point. The thing that makes this game different is what you're really trying to do in the game and how you win it. Uh, that whole idea of hey I'm gonna be getting these, spe these specific peptides and the snails I have are gonna get me specific ones. Some of them will get me one or two of them. Some of them will get me a wild one. Some of them will allow me to get any of them. And I'm building those to try to combat those cabals that are there. I like how you're trying to uh, look and peek at those cabals. You're watching what other people are getting after they peek and you're thinking, okay, I did not, maybe I don't have to look there because they looked there and now they got this and they got this. Maybe I should start getting what they're getting over there and I'll be fine on that cabal over there. Uh, so I think that aspect really is what makes this game different from any other deck builder is the way that you're trying to secretly and in an intrigue of manner, you're trying to gather those peptides, uh, which is all educational. You'll learn in the book as to how these peptides act and what they do and how they, they make medicine and all these cool things. And I think it's a cool idea. Um, a few issues I had with the game was number one, the rule book uh, was nothing but blocks of text, which was really hard to read. Um, and you know, the game itself is okay. I'm not a deck builder fan in general, but I really like that aspect again of, of guessing what those cabals were. Uh, when it comes down to this is mainly being used a lot in, in, for educators. And I like on their website, you can see that not only do they work with the American, uh, you know, the history of Na the Natural History Museum, but they're actually teaching teachers how to demo this game, how to teach this game, how to bring it into classrooms so they can learn about the science, about the animals, about peptides, what they do. And I think that's really cool. One of the things that I, I think is the game itself is a deck building game. And I think for brand new people that have not played anything but Monopoly and Clue, it's going to be a little bit of a, 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 a learning curve to get past that. Now, recently, they actually just came out with a new demo that helped teachers set this up more effectively. They get everyone starts with specific cards uh, and they start with specific prey that helps them with that. So I think that will alleviate some of the concerns I have with that. The other concern is 
it, it, it's not going to replace, say, Dominion or Ascension for you, like, diehard deck, deck building games. It's cool, it's different, but I think it's not going to overtake those. So my fear is that this might fall into no man's land, where it's a little bit too hard for the non-gamers, but not gamery enough for the hardcore gamers, and it might find itself as no man's land. But I will say that I was very impressed with how they took that twist on the cabals, and I love what they're doing with education and with children. So with that, I'm going to recommend this game because of the whole body of work here. Uh, and I really enjoyed that difference and what they're doing with the game. So if you have kids that you are trying to get into playing a lot of games and you want to learn at the same time, this is a fantastic deck building game for that reason. Just don't think it's going to replace any of your best deck builders at this point. Well, that's what I think about Killer Snails. Excellent job from them. I appreciate what they're doing in, in the community with the kids and teaching. I love it. Keep it up. And that's Killer Snails. This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.